In this lesson, we're going to learn how we can send push notifications from our app that then appear on our end user's device. And we're going to go through the setup here for both iOS and Android. So to set this up for Apple, go to your account section within your Apple developer account and make sure that if you go under identifiers and then open up your app here, that the push notification capability is enabled down here. If it is enabled, then what we can do is go back and then under this keys section, we're gonna create a new key that's gonna allow us to use this push notification service. So we can give it a simple name and then toggle on here the Apple push notification service and then hit configure. I'm gonna set this up to be a sandbox and production key and then hit save. Then we can hit continue and finally register. And then you can download your key and you'll only be able to do this once. So make sure you store this in a secure place. And then you can hit done. Now I want you to copy this key ID, which you can do by clicking on this key that you just created and just copy this key ID because we're gonna paste that here within our mobile settings in the bubble editor. And then just upload the actual key that you just downloaded. So it's time to set up our push notifications now. And what I've done is just set up a new view that we can access from our account page, which is going to let us observe how this push notification logic works in Bubble. So this is a view that I'm not actually gonna use in the final app. I've just created it here just for demonstration purposes. And one thing that I want to point out is that I'm using this data source here, current users devices. And I'm gonna explore what this means in a minute, but just for now, let's set up what we need to do here to request notification permissions. So one of the things that I've got here is this text element, which is displaying something called the current users devices. And this is actually a built-in data type here that is connected to our push notification logic. And how this works is gonna become clear in a moment. I'm just gonna ignore this for one second. What I want us to do first though, is to actually ask permission from the user to be able to send push notifications to their device. So again, this is accessing a device resource, just like camera access, location access. And so we need to request permission from the user before we can send push notifications from our app to their device. And this button here is going to have an action where I'm going to demonstrate this. And it lives under emails and notifications, request push notification permissions. Now I'm testing this app here within Bubble Go. And if I tap that button, nothing is going to happen. And push notifications is something that isn't gonna work within Bubble Go. So what we actually need to do is run a live version of our app to be able to test this functionality. And we can do this on Android by setting up some internal testing and on Apple by setting up internal testing via test flight. And I will link to the relevant lessons on testing on iOS or Android in the description for this lesson, if you haven't watched those videos already. But in order to test within those environments, we are going to have to deploy our latest changes to live. And those changes include any of the configuration that we've added for our push notification settings within mobile settings, as well as the logic here for requesting push notification permissions. Now, in your case, what I recommend that you do is set up your entire logic for how you want push notifications to work within the context of your application, and then deploy all of those changes to live at once. Right now, I'm just going to push this one update where we are requesting push notifications without a corresponding action for actually sending a push notification. And I'm only doing that for demonstration purposes because I want to show you here step-by-step step how things work. So I'm going to deploy a new version of my app to make this work. It's obviously gonna be a web and mobile version. I'll add a quick description here. And because this is a new feature that we are adding, and especially because it involved updating our mobile settings, 
we need to make sure that we are selecting here a new build for this to work. And it's just a small feature addition that doesn't break any existing functionality. So the release type here should be minor. Now, as this is a new build that we've deployed, it's gonna take some time for it to be available either within the App Store Connect for Apple or the Google Play Console for Android. So I'll come back shortly to continue. Okay, so it's been about half an hour and our latest build has been completed and it should be available to view now within App Store Connect and or the Google Play Console, depending on which of these services that you are using. I'm gonna show things here from the perspective of the App Store Connect, but the same principle applies for Android as well. Now, because I already had an internal testing team set up where they would automatically receive the latest builds, I should have access now within the Test Flight app. So what I need to do within Test Flight is just hit update here. And once it's finished updating, I can open this new build of the app. And what we should be able to observe now from our push notifications page is that if I tap the button here to request push notifications, that I am seeing here a request modal. So I'm gonna hit allow. And what I want you to notice is all of this information up here. So this is coming from this text here. And what we're doing is we're grabbing as a data source something called the current user's devices, right? So this is a built-in field that each user has. And it's represented by this data type here within our database. And there's a few built-in fields that this device data type has. And what I'm doing is that for each device within this list, which right now is just one device, I'm using this format as text operator. And if you saw the video on setting up our AI functionality with Open Router, then this will be familiar to you. But basically what it does, takes a list of things as an input. And then for each item in that list, I can pull out the fields for that particular list item and display them here. So you can see that there's a few fields that I'm able to display, the current user who's attached to the device, the type of device, this push notification token field, and also the unique ID for the device data type that we're looking at. And one thing that is interesting to note is that this notification token field here isn't actually visible. So this is something that we can't expose to end users. And there is actually a default privacy rule here for the device data type that we can't change, which actually prevents that field from being displayed to our end users. So what actually happens when we request a push notification is that we create a new device data type in our database. And so if we look here within the live version of our database, within this devices table, we actually have here one entry. And you can see here is that push notification token. We on the back end here can observe this. We just can't send it through to our users. So this device entry here is what is going to allow us to send a push notification to the user on the given device, iOS in this case. And we can send a push notification by adding an action in my example here to this button. And that action is under emails and notifications, send push notification. We can add in here a few fields just while we are testing this out. And this body we can actually feed from this message input here. So I'm gonna set this to be the value of that input. And then for devices, here we just feed this with all of the current users' devices. And for us to see this in action, we're going to need to deploy this change. And it can simply be an over the air update this time since we've already done all of the hard yards in setting up the push notification configuration settings. And now why don't we test this out by adding in an example message and let's see if this works. And there it is. There is our test push notification. Let's see if it works with another one. And there it is. Now let's go through and set up push notifications for Android now. And there is a article in the bubble manual on how to set this up, which I will link to in the description for this lesson. But we'll also just go through things together now. So to start, you wanna to go to this website called Firebase. 
This is a platform that Google owns that provides a suite of tools, products, services for developers. And it's where we're going to set up the ability for us to send push notifications to Android devices. So you'll want to start by creating a new project. And instead of creating a new project from scratch, you can also link to a project that you've already created within Google Cloud. So I'm gonna do that here. And then we'll go through the onboarding steps here. You can enable Google Analytics, which isn't relevant for what we're trying to do right now. So I'm just going to disable it. And then Firebase will create our new project. Once it's ready, you'll wanna enter your project. Next, we want to add our Android app. So we're gonna click this little Android icon here. We're gonna add our package name, which is something that we can just grab from our bubble settings since we've already added this when we created our app within Google Play. I will also give it a quick nickname, just makes it easy to see within the Firebase console. And then we can ignore this signing certificate section and just hit register app. We're gonna to wanna to download this config file and then we can simply close out of this menu. Next, you'll wanna head over to this little cog icon and enter project settings. Then go over to service accounts and just hit generate new private key. That private key will then be saved to your computer. And so now the two files that we've just downloaded, we can upload here. So the first file that we downloaded was that config file and it should be named like this, googleservices.json. And then the service account key was the one that we just downloaded. So we're gonna upload that as well. Now, this is obviously just an example setup for how push notifications work, but you're gonna to want to use push notifications in a way that makes sense for the context of your app. So in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you an example of this within our Wanderlog app, where we're gonna schedule push notifications to remind users to add trip information into the app. We'll see you there.